Welcome back to another episode of Decipher, folks. A reoccurring video series from Blockstream that shares best practices in Bitcoin by exploring some of the cool features in our wallets, Layer 2 tech, and other products for all skill levels. In today's video, we'll dive into the topic of Miniscript. Miniscript is a more advanced and secure scripting language for Bitcoin introduced by Blockstream in 2019 that enables easier construction and analysis of complex spending conditions. Before we learn more about Miniscript, we'll first review Bitcoin's native programming language, BitcoinScript, and then we'll go into how Miniscript improves upon it as well as examples of what Bitcoin features Miniscript enables, why you might want to use it, and then demo how to use a Blockstream Jade hardware wallet with Miniscript. First off, let's quickly recap what BitcoinScript is. BitcoinScript is the native programming language of Bitcoin and the backbone of Bitcoin smart contract functionality. It allows users to define various spending conditions for their Bitcoins beyond simple single key payments, resulting in unique transaction types like conditions like Lightning, multi-sig wallets, atomic swaps, time locks, and much, much more. However, harnessing the full power of Bitcoin script can be challenging given it's intentionally limited in its capabilities to maintain network security and prevent potential vulnerabilities. It can handle a wide range of transaction types and conditions, but it is not designed for complex, Turing-complete smart contracts like those on Ethereum or other altcoin chains. Constructing complex scripts in Bitcoin currently can be quite cumbersome, and then adding in verification and security are sometimes just as challenging. Moreover, each new script requires bespoke development work, which sometimes leads to inefficiencies and compatibility issues. This is why engineers at Blockstream introduced Miniscript in 2019 as a way to write more complex smart contracts on Bitcoin and to make Bitcoin scripting more accessible and easier to use. Using Bitcoin script today for building sophisticated spending conditions is far harder than it needs to be, requiring special purpose software to be developed, tested, and deployed for each new use case. Miniscript can cover these cases in a way that generalizes across arbitrary sets of spending conditions and is frequently much simpler and more reliable than a special purpose solution otherwise would be. Miniscript is a way to express complex smart contracts in a way that is more human readable and easier to work with. It is a language that allows for the creation of more sophisticated applications on Bitcoin, such as more advanced multi-sig wallets and complex multi-party escrows. We will go into more of what Miniscript enables later in this video, so keep on following along. An interesting way to think about smart contracts is to treat them like digital agents programmed to carry out predefined tasks, control, or record important events and actions in accordance with contract terms. Their main goal? To lessen dependence on trusted third parties like lawyers or banks in financial dealings. These digital agents automate contract execution aiming to boost efficiency, slash expenses, and mitigate fraud risks. By eliminating the need for human oversight, they ensure contractual obligations are met seamlessly and securely. Let's go over a few examples of what Miniscript actually enables. First, time lock multi signature transactions. Multi signature wallets, otherwise known as multi sig, have multiple keys protecting a Bitcoin wallet. For example, a two of three multi sig requires two of the three keys to sign off on a transaction for the transaction to be sent. For a much deeper dive into multi-sig wallets, check out our earlier deciphered link down in the description box down below. With Miniscript, users can use multi-sig wallets and time locks simultaneously to create complex multi-sig wallets. Let's take a two of three multi-sig wallet. In a typical multi-sig wallet, if you lose two of the three keys, your Bitcoin is locked forever. With Miniscript, you can assign a time duration to certain keys. This can be used as an extra layer of security or in more corporate scenarios, such as treasury management for a business, where funds may need to be accessed by multiple executives. If some of the key holders are unavailable, a single executive can access the funds after a delay. You can also create more advanced time lock conditions by configuring certain time thresholds that will reset the wallet's time lock. For instance, you can set it up so that the wallet owner has to sign the wallet every 500 blocks. If the owner doesn't sign the wallet within the time frame, the time lock of the wallet will begin to expire. However, if the owner signed the wallet within the 500 block threshold, the time lock on the wallet will not be triggered. Second, hierarchical key signing. For instance, if you have a one of three multi-sig with Miniscript, you can designate which key is needed to sign the transaction at any given time. 
This gives the key more authority over the others and allows you to create advanced conditional payments and recovery mechanisms. Another example is a payment system where different conditions must be met for different types of transactions. For example, small payments might only require a single signature, while larger payments require multiple signatures and a time lock. This provides more granular control over transaction policies, ensuring that higher value transactions are subject to stricter security measures. And third, more complex escrow arrangements. You can use Miniscript to create an escrow that requires signatures from multiple parties under different conditions. For example, a transaction that can be sent from either A and B together, B and C after a certain amount of time, or A and C after even a longer time. This can be used in lots of different scenarios. Take a payment to a contractor that is released only when both the client and the third party inspector sign off on the completion of the work. Or an inheritance setup, where funds are released to the heir only after a certain amount of time, but can be accessed earlier if multiple trustees agree. Self-custody is crucial to take full control of your Bitcoin, especially in an environment where centralized exchanges may mishandle your funds or go offline. However, the prospect of self-custody can be daunting for many individuals. Miniscript can be useful here as it simplifies the setup of advanced multi-sig wallets and enhances security for single signature wallets. It also protects against threats like the $5 wrench attack, where individuals are coerced into revealing their private keys under duress. Additionally, Miniscript helps mitigate the risk of losing access to funds stored in multi-sig wallets due to key mismanagement or unexpected circumstances. The benefits of Miniscript also extend beyond more convenience and security. It offers peace of mind, especially when it comes to high stress life situations like family savings or inheritance planning. By structuring wallets with Miniscript, individuals can ensure that their Bitcoin is passed on securely and seamlessly to their designated beneficiaries without the complexities and uncertainties often associated with traditional asset planning processes. Now that we've gotten a little more in depth into how Miniscript actually works and why you might want to use it, let's show you how to actually use it. Today, I'll be using the Liana wallet to use Miniscript with Jade. There will be more Bitcoin wallets such as Blockstream Green compatibility with Miniscript coming soon. You can find the Liana download link in the description box down below. In my Liana wallet, I'm going to create a new wallet. And once I do that, I'm going to select which keys I want to assign this wallet. In the background, I'm unlocking my Jade. And once I unlock my Jade, I get to select it and then give it a name. In this example, I'll name it Jade1. Then I'm going to select a second key to assign the wallet. And I'm going in the background, going to unlock my second Jade. Once I unlock my second Jade, I'm able to select it. And then again, name this device. From there, I'm going to select a third key to assign the wallet, and actually I'm going to select my computer. Liana will give me 12 words for this key. You'll see that in a little bit. I'm going to name it computer. From there, I'm gonna scroll down and I am going to select which key I will be able, be required to use once the time lock is up. I want to select my computer and I'm going to press apply. From there, I'm going to select the time duration required uh, in order to pass, in order for just one key to be able to spend the wallet. As of recording, I want to select 29 days as I want to be on October 31st to be able to spend the transaction from the one computer key. From there, I'm gonna press next and Liana will give me my 12 words for my computer seed. From there, Liana is going to ask me to back up the wallet descriptor. I'm going to copy this and I will paste it into a doc. From there, I'm going to go to the wallet policy and just read it through everything to make sure this is what I want the wallet to do. Everything looks good to me, so I'm gonna press next. From there, it's going to ask me to save the descriptor to a hardware wallet and I'm gonna select Jade2. From there, I'm going over to my Jade2 and uh, on the device, a new menu will pop up just to confirm all of the details that Liana just gave us. As you can see, I'm going through it. Everything looks good. And I just press good. 
From there, I go back to Liana and it says, thank you for registering the descriptor. I press next. And then from there, Liana gives you two options. Either you can use your own node or you can use Liana Connect. In this example, I'm gonna be using my own node. And as of recording, Liana came out with a new update that allows you to run a pruned node on your device. So I'm gonna do that. I'm speeding through the uh, download. And once I finalize the installation, a, I'm able to receive to this wallet. From there, I am going to press receive and I am going to confirm the address on my Jade hardware wallet. If you wanna learn why you wanna do this or how to do this, uh, please check out our earlier Deciphered on why you'd wanna do this. Uh, the link will be in the description box down below. So in the background, I'm checking on my Jade and the address looks good. So I'm gonna copy it and go over to my Blockstream Green wallet. I'm gonna paste in the address and then I'm going to send the address 150,000 sats. From there, I am going to go back to my Liana wallet just to see if there's an unconfirmed transaction. And as you can see, there is an unconfirmed transaction right there. With the power of editing, we are going to fast forward to see that this transaction has been confirmed. Nice job. So from there, I just wanna see uh, the ability to send those 150,000 sats. So I go to the send tab, and as you can see, I'm able to send those funds as we have them. And then I go to home, and we can see the logic behind the mini script multi-sig, and then we can also see our Bitcoin. So nice job. And that wraps up today's episode, folks. Before we sign off, let's take a quick moment to recap. We first kicked off by diving into the significance of Bitcoin's native programming language, Bitcoin Script. Its intentional limitations play a crucial role in upholding network security and thwarting potential vulnerabilities. From there, we talked about Miniscript, an extension of Bitcoin Script developed by Blockstream that offers users more complex spending conditions and custody solutions without sacrificing the security of Bitcoin Script. We then gave some practical, real-world examples showcasing how users can use Miniscript's versatility in multi-party savings accounts and inheritance planning applications. And finally, we did a walkthrough on how to use your Jade with new Miniscript capabilities in tandem with the Liana software wallet. As always, please share your questions, insights, and suggestions in the comments section down below. And remember, as we sign off, to keep stacking those sats, and above all else, don't trust, verify.